What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Trevor in his place. Spire of the Dragon two, 2 part. Uh, Spire of the Dragon 2: Ripto's Rage Part 1. This is the second Spire of the Dragon game in the series. The uh, another, another in the yeah, another in the Insomniac games, and the first Spire of the Dragon game not to be set in the in the dragon world or the dragon realms. This is in a new world uh, named Avalar, which we will uh, find out here in a moment. See, similar to the uh, beginning of Spiral, uh, Spiral One, you know they have usually they'll have uh, characters that uh, are in the game and they do uh, different things. You can just see the loading process and everything, S similar to how uh, uh, Spiral One was. So you see here in the world of dragons. And this will just kind of give you a backstory as to what's going on. Is this rain ever going to stop? I forgot what the sun looks like. We should go on vacation. Somewhere warm. Somewhere sunny. Dragon Shores. Yeah, I haven't been there since we kicked Nasty Nork's butt. How about it, Sparks? You up for a vacation at the beach? Last one there is a Nork. And they also uh, have cutscenes and uh, more more cutscenes in here rather than just tied to the dragons. Is it working, Professor? Almost. Just a few more adjustments to these orbs, and maybe this isn't such a good idea. Bringing a dragon here could just make Ripto angrier. Calm down, Hunter, and stop fidgeting. Now you saw the professor's book. They have claws like this, teeth like this, and they spit fire like this. Poo, poo. They sound much more dangerous than Ripto. That's exactly the point. A dragon is our only chance of stopping Ripto, and you know it. It's working. It's working! I've got a dragon! Shame the uh, disc is. Uh, it's not an old disc. And well, uh, stinks. Well, maybe I can try to find the list of what they're talking about. Uh, well, now what she's explaining there is the guidebook. Uh, it's something that was not added in the uh, in the original game. It kind of it, it's like the inventory, but just a little bit more detailed. Because there's more things you can do in the levels. There's uh, different collectibles this time. And I'll uh, pull the guidebook up here really quickly and just show it off. You can see this. Uh, this will tell you the world. The world one. This is the the area like Glimmer that we are in. So you just go to Glimmer, and you can see 400 pieces of treasure and then three orbs. There's also a talisman here that you get that you get for get going through the level. Uh, just, I believe, getting to the end of the level or doing a, or completing a certain task. Uh, we can look, take a look at the options. Uh, camera, passive, map. We'll go ahead and turn that on. Don't worry about anything else. Make sure everything's on. Done. Okay, so. Okay, 
so we have to uh, that's our that's our task here we have to take care of the lizards for a glimmer and we will gain an orb and you will get get the orb at the end of the level and so you can see uh, the gems do return in this game and these are, these are the uh, these are the lizards that we have to destroy. They they act a lot like the Norks did in the first world. And uh, I'm not sure that map may may get in the way. I'll I've, I didn't even know the game had, this game had a map, so uh, I'll leave it up for now and I'll and I'll look back at the video or if I just see anything that if the map messes with anything I'll go ahead and re uh, remove it for later videos but I'll go ahead and keep it up now but uh, and if you notice the enemies don't give us uh, they don't give us gems they it's well I don't remember exactly what she has to, she has to explain it Sadly, uh, we will learn what these little glowing things are right now. I don't, remember, I don't quite remember their names. Uh, I just know what their, their function is. They will allow us to use uh, different power-ups that, that we will see later on. And you can see the those glowing things are going up there, and so that is a power that we that we will get to later. Uh, but we can't get to it right now. All right, so we don't know how to we don't know how to climb right now. That is a, a power up that we have to learn later on in the game. Uh, that's something new that this game added. Uh, that there's different uh, I wouldn't say really powers. They're more like abilities that you have to uh, buy from this certain character that we will see later on in this level. We won't be able to use it. We won't be able to buy the climbing power right now. We'll have to wait. Uh, we'll have to wait wait to use the or we'll have to wait to buy the power. The, the climbing power, but we can buy things from that character, and I'll, I'll talk about that character once we get to it. Uh, so the, if you notice that that little hover, is that is what replaces the, the uh, thing from the, from uh, Spiral One, where if, if you press the triangle button, you would come down a lot faster, or you know you could land wherever you wanted to. Well, the, the hover is a lot more useful because uh, because of these, this, the uh, f fall rate, or I guess the drop rate for the glide is not quite as bad. They definitely fixed it so that you stay in the stay in the air a lot a lot longer than you would normally. And if you notice there, the it's like the Norks from the from the previous game. The big enemies you cannot charge, but the little ones you can. And armor works the same way as well. Okay, so this is money bags. He will charge you for different things like this. You can, uh, you see, your total gems. We have enough to buy the bridge. Thank you, Mr. Dragon. Spyro was it. You can now use the bridge whenever you want, free of charge. I hope we meet again when you have even more gems. So that, that's what he does. He will charge you for different things uh, like the bridge. But once the bridge becomes available to you, you can use it any time. You do not, you do not have to buy things from him again. And you may notice uh, the gems glittering. We can't get to these. We, we can't get to these right now. As I said, we have to. We have to gain the climbing power, which we will get later on. And I will. And once we get the climbing power, that's when I will uh, uh, come back here. But like I said, we won't be. We won't, we won't. We won't be getting it right now. So I can't. I can't finish the level. There will be some levels like that where you won't be able to finish them until later on. Sadly, but you know, yeah, it is what it is. It's, I guess it's more uh, for replay value. Spyro, 
And so pretty much just getting to the end, end, of, the, end of the level, you'll gain a talisman. Each level has a talisman that you uh, have to get. And so uh, we can go through that portal if we're done, but we're not. There is a, a rear section here, if you notice the map, with a bunch of gems in it, as well as other uh, enemies to get. Uh, there is a set, a set number of enemies that you that you have to kill. You don't gain a bonus for it, like a, a, an, an orb or anything like that. But uh, you know, it's just it's just something for you to do. And now in this game, you can you notice that fodder does return, but there's something different about this game. You can feed Sparks ten gems, or not ten gems, uh, ten butterflies, and you will gain one life. That's how you gain lives in this game because the enemies give you that that little glowing power or that little glowing ball. Great! The superfly power up is active, and you can restart our gem lamps. Flame all the lamps quickly, and the big gem lamps will light. The power up will give you enough magic to fly for a short time. Well, that's a shame. I guess I, if I would have came to him a little bit sooner. And you can see here, you do have uh, like a checklist: walk through the walk through pyramids for superfly power, light gem lamps with flame, light light all lamps quickly. Or I guess they're more tense. You can see the difficulty for the challenges. This is a very easy challenge, so you don't have to worry about it being difficult. But all you have to do is just light all of these uh, gem gem lamps. And the controls are the same as they were in the flight and the flight levels for, from Spiral One. You do have a ceiling that you uh, that you have to hit. And if you miss, uh, if you, you know, of course you don't want to go too high because you'll go really slow. Thanks for helping me light the lamp spiral. A fairy gave me this orb, but I like gems better. You take it instead. All right, so now we gained our, we we have gained our first orb, and you can see what the orbs do, and you will, and it will save your progress every time you get get an orb, and I believe they also save for talismans as well. So if you, uh, you know, if you just if you're worried about saving, you can always find an orb, or I guess like more like a checkpoint. It's not actual save. All right, so uh, he, he could probably explain it better than I can. But what you have to do is you have to pick up a rock, go into first-person mode, and then use the flame. To shoot a lizard. And that's how you are able to uh, kill the lizards. If you get too close to the lizards, if you notice there, there's a lizard hole there, if you get too close to the lizards, you will not be able to hit them with the rocks, so you, you have, you're, you're forced to hit them from a distance, which does. Uh, it may increase the, difficult, the, the difficulty a little bit. And this is more uh, like a tutorial to help you learn how to use the spit, since this is a new uh, feature that appeared in this game. Now you can usually hit the lizards just by having the circle right over the lizards. I guess you could hit those other lizards just by spitting. But you can just see how easy it is that you don't have to, uh, you know, it's, it's still pretty easy. You don't have to do too much. Wait for the lizard. And there you go. Not not too difficult. Uh, like I said, this is just a tutorial. It's supposed to help help teach you how to deal with the lizards. Uh, or just use the spitting by itself uh, in case you, you know, in case you ever needed to. Where's that lizard at? Should be able to hit it. There we go. All I have to do is just found, uh, follow this Jim Cutter around, uh, and, you know, all the way till till he gets to the end of the end of the level, and then you'll uh, have, you know, then you'll get another orb for doing this. There will be different little challenges like this in every single level. So uh, it's it, you know it does pay to look out for them because you as I said you will gain that ah, got that 
went that, that one went a, little, went a little bit too high. And this one is a little bit faster, so you want to uh, time it just a little bit better. You can see he moves around a lot more than any of the other lizards that we've uh, faced so far. And just because you shoot at a lizard does not mean you'll uh, hit it, especially that lizard. Let's see where is. I think he's on top of the roof up here. Yeah. So this one's a pain to hit. There we go. Okay. Okay. And so we gain, we got another orb. The the last orb is for going, you know, climbing up to the top of the uh, up the ladder here and doing that particular uh, super the, the, the power up. I think it was a super fly power up. Uh, so we can't get to that right now. If you uh, really quickly, there's no point in, in showing this off, but just just to show you that you can't do it in case you were curious. You cannot. Well, I guess I still need to get the gems up here too, don't I? Uh, you you're not going to be able to use the super the super fly power up and bring it into the caves in here. I think it will take it away from you, if I'm not mistaken. No. Okay. Well, maybe you don't have to actually uh, get to the super. Well, may maybe this is as far as you can get. I think you need the super fly power up to be able to get over there. So yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to get the. Let's see how many gems I have. Oh, I guess the uh, that w the 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 select button will pull down the hu uh, the HUD like with Crash One. It'll show your your gems, your lives, and your uh, how many enemies you've killed. If you pause it, you'll see what you've done. So we need f uh, 400 pieces of treasure, so I'm definitely missing some treasure somewhere. Uh, but yeah, you know, you can use a super fly to get to get over to that other section, but you're not gonna be able to get up pretty any higher than that. So anyway, uh, well, that's the that's where the rest of the treasure is. So I guess I'll go ahead and clear out the treasure. It'll uh, make it a little bit easier when I'm when I have to come back here for the soup uh, the you know for the, for the climbing ability. I can just go after the I can just go after the. Uh, la the lamp instead of having to go through all this. So you, this is the this is the ceiling. You cannot go any higher than this. And once the super fly power up goes away, you'll just glide. So you do want to keep that in mind if you're uh, concerned about that. So I'm still missing some treasure around here somewhere. It must be where that super that uh, that other super fly power up is. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get out of here now. Oh, but yeah, you know that's just kind of shows you some of the different things about the game. Of course, there's a, a, a lot to do here. Now you see this castle here is going to be taken over b no. by uh, Ripto. Shame. Uh, I'll have to try to find a list for this for this as well. But uh, anyway, so you can.
that just tells you what you have to do in the game. It does auto save after leaving the level, so you can do that. You know, if you're worried that worried about saving, you don't have to go to any certain locations to save anymore. And yeah, so uh, now we are in the home where the home worlds uh, have gems and uh, orbs, I believe. Nope, no orbs, just just gems. So uh, un unlike the home worlds in the Dragon King, uh, the Dragon World, you do not have to worry about. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, collectibles like the uh, orbs here. Now you notice I did swim. There is only certain water you can swim in. If it's clear, you can swim in it. Uh, this you can swim in, but there will be some types of water that you will not be able to swim in. These blue butterflies are, uh, are lives. You have to have Sparks eat one of the butterflies, and if he eats one of the butterflies, he will gain a life. Okay, so that's uh, what we that's what we have to do now. And you can see there's different types of uh, fodder here. You should go to the different locations. Usually, usually there's only two different types of fodder in the home worlds. But I, 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 I'm pretty sure that's that's all that. That's the only places where you'll see different types of fodder. You saw the sheep in the first area, and then you see the frogs down here in this area. this real quick before I talk to Hunter. Hiya Spyro, Ripto smashed this bridge, so I guess you'll have to glide across it. Press X to jump, then press X again while you're still in the air to glide. I'm guessing people complain that the original Spyro didn't explain the game well enough because uh, it goes into the detail quite a bit about the different moves, especially if you already played the Spyro games before, then you'll know a lot of this stuff, but just in case you haven't, you know, you know you, uh, it will definitely go into qu quite a bit of detail for you. And so that just goes into a little bit more detail about Sparks, unlike what uh, the dragons in the Dragon Kingdom did for you. Uh, but anyway, so there's uh, it. But as I was talking about the the water, you can actually dive down into into the water, underneath the water, and swim around in the water like that. But you have to uh, you have to buy it from money backs here, and I believe it costs 500 gems. Uh, sorry, Spyro. I'd love to teach you how to swim underwater, but not as much as I'd love to take your treasure. 500, yeah. Now, if you notice any text that is uh, in green, that means it is an uh, that is unimportant. Uh, that is something important. So you uh, that that's usually that will tell you uh, explain something or like a, like a power up or something like that. You see, and we've already been jumping for quite a while. I guess uh, not jumping, you know, holding it down. Okay, not bad. Now to make this next jump, you'll have to glide. Press X to jump, then press X again at the top of your jump to get the maximum glide distance. So this actually just walks you through the maximum glide distance, something that the other, that uh, Spire 1 did not do. Yeah, it definitely gives you quite a bit of detail, which is not a bad thing at all. No, unless you fall. <laughs> uh, but yeah, giving giving you all this, uh, you know, a, bunch, a lot of detail, especially if you've never played the game before. I uh, say Spiral One, or you just uh, wasn't really good at gliding all that much, and those may those sections may have given you trouble in the original game. Well, they definitely go through quite a bit of uh, they go into detail. 
yeah, you're just going to say the same thing you did before, uh, except to make sure you wait until you are near your target before you hover. Don't forget to press forward on the D-pad or the analog stick when you hover. So, if you do mess something up, they will go, they will try to give you hints like that. You know, if you do mess, mess something up, they'll try to walk you through it. Now the hovering, you don't have to do all that much. The hover takes away a lot of the problems with the glide. You don't have to uh, focus so much on gliding as you would normally. Let me see, I think there's an orb up there. Yeah. If you hear something, it kind of sounds like treasure bouncing, that's usually where an orb is, and let's see, I think it's somewhere around here. Maybe maybe it's underwater, how you get to it. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll get it later. Uh, but yeah, you you go into, uh, you, the, the hover definitely helps with the, this kind of stuff. I want to take a look at the guidebook really quickly. So there's one... Seven areas instead of the original three. Uh, so I'm gonna have to divide my time better than I did in uh, Spiral One. Like I, I could clear a an entire world in one video. This I don't want to make the videos too long. I know some of those got pretty ridiculous, so I don't want to make them too awful long. So, uh, so I will have, like I said, have to divide my time up a little bit better. So this has an underwater section as well, so we'll have to come back here uh, for the for the underwater section sadly and this I, I wish I could have get, gotten enough treasure to get out of here now you can see what the idols uh, they there are different types of idols just like there's different types of enemies in every in every level uh, especially sizes and armor and different things like that uh, that you have to deal with and if you notice at the if you notice at the start of the level there was a, a, a cutscene that uh, that it, you know that went on and kind of showed you uh, what was going on. And you know, it, there's no words to it. It just kind of gives you a, a short introduction, really. That, like I said, just kind of helps to helps you get an idea of what's going on in in that particular particular level. Uh, Every every level will have that, that type of cutscene in it. Those metal shields are making enemies invulnerable to your flame attack. If you press and hold the square button, you can defeat them with your charge attack. And so uh, that will. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can skip it if you want to, but I, I won't be skipping it. Just, just because it, you know, it kind of helps give a, a backstory to what's going on in the level, as I said before. Now you can see there's, uh, like I said, different types of these TT idols. The big ones, obviously, you cannot uh, charge. You can only flame those. The little ones with the shields, or just little ones in general. I don't think there's any little ones uh, uh, that you can actually run into and. Uh, that you can charge into. I think you have to uh, flame them all, but they will. Uh, you just have to be careful about that and pay attention for that for, for those uh, types of uh, idols. And they made that.
out a, a lot better in this game. You know, the, one of the criticisms was that the camera didn't work very well. But you press the L2 button to, to pan the camera to the right. You press the L2 button to pan the camera to the left. V very great system. I, that's, the, that's usually the camera angle that a lot of people use in light. And uh, myself included. So I'm very glad they were able to, to do that. This is something that we'll need to do later on. So I won't worry about that right now. So, our, uh, you know, you've seen, our, seen what our mission is here. You have to free these little carpenters to allow them to open the doors for us, and then that will take you all the way to the end, end, of, the end of the level. And so they'll, every level will have its own uh, type of talisman. That, you know, none of the talismans will be the same. They may be they may be the same color, but they won't be the same design. Uh, but anyway, so because because of the hover, there will be more gems that are stuck up in higher areas that would require a lot of gliding and uh, hovering. So you want to always look out look in high places as well. You did that that wasn't something that you really had to do in Spiral One too often was uh, you know looking around in high places. But in this game, you definitely want to. If, you're, if you end up missing some treasure and it looks like there may be high places in the level, that's where you want to go and, and look and, ha and take a look. But anyway, okay. Let me see. We'll go ahead and hop down here real quick and uh, see what we, uh, we'll grab the. We'll grab the treasure that's around here, and I'll take a look at that in a moment. Try to grab all the treasure that's around here, and then we'll, I like I said, we'll, we'll go, we'll go around here and do this. This is a, uh, a, a supercharge, crap, oh, come on, that, that, uh, it's very hard to control, so you want, you do want to get used to it. And what the what these little people here are doing is they are, I guess, doing a rain dance to get the idol to go away. You have to unlock all of them at, at once, or uh, free them all at once to. have to free them all at once, or they will, as you notice, they will they will just fly back to their uh, pedestals, and then you'll have to do it all over again. So, uh, getting getting used to the the supercharge will definitely help you out because there's some supercharge sections later on in the game that you will definitely want to get get used to that. You know, make sure that you can get used to them. Four, and I'm thinking I'm missing uh, an, an upper section through here. Oh yeah, okay. Like I said, there's a, yeah, especially in this level, there's a whole up upper section up through here that has quite a bit of treasure through here that you want to uh, try to try to get most of, it, if not all of it. Just remember, if you don't think you can make it, uh, you can you can use the hover. It's not a for sure. Uh, you know, uh, if you if you don't jump in the, at the right time at all, you know you you won't make it to begin with. But if you But it will help you out. It will be a lot easier, uh, and it will make uh, gliding a lot more easier and a lot more accurate. Uh, sadly, we can't swim yet, so I can't go underneath there. So I can't go into a, another section of the level and do a challenge for an orb here. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, exit the level. Just because I can't go and do, oh, excuse me, I, I can't do anything else here in, in the level. Oh, I can't get this piece of treasure though. So let me see, we'll go ahead and get out of here and you can just see, well, 
like I said, the, the hover isn't a for sure thing. You have to kind of be on the level with things and uh, to be able to get up to where you need to go. I believe this is a underwater section, if I'm not mistaken. No, but it, if you follow this, that will take you to a a quest or a challenge that will force us to go underwater, so I won't worry about that right now. There will be also be a, an ending cutscene that will kind of show you what happens after you leave. I'll go ahead and go after the uh, swim ability, and I guess I can go back into Idle Springs. I don't see why, you know, why not? And you see, also Sparks does eat the butterflies a lot faster than he did in the original game as well. Yeah, it's always a small fee, even though it w doesn't seem like it. Great. Okay. When you jump in the water, you can use the D-pad to move around the surface. Use square to dive underwater. When you are underwater, use X to paddle and square to jump. Okay, so... Now, I guess I'll go back into Idle Springs again, and then I will... Uh... see getting on 37 minutes this will take some time and you can replay the intro if you want to just by by pressing the, uh, the this guy won't tell us anything else so we'll just go ahead and uh, just bypass him like I said there's an underwater section through here that I'll go ahead and show off the go underwater uh, real quick it's the same as moving on uh, you can't move forward you can only move forward at a very slow point well, maybe I guess you can't move forward. Uh, the only way you can move forward is by charging. You can move. Uh, you can move around. You know, left to go left, right to go right. To go up, you push down on the. You push down, and then to 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 go up, you push down, and then down to go up, kind of like uh, airplane controls. And I believe in here is, as I said, a challenge. That we have to do later on, or maybe we have to get the the swimming ability to be able to get to this particular challenge. Yeah, okay, that's that was it. I've been locked in here with all our tools, and the giant idol heads won't let the workers in unless we can solve the three puzzles they've given us. The first puzzle is to turn all these blocks yellow. If you have trouble, come back and talk to me. Okay, so this is a three-star difficulty. This is actually pretty difficult. Uh, you just have to make sure that you know you have to turn all the blocks yellow. It's one of these where you have to find the right combination of blocks. And I, and I don't remember the combination, right? Uh, to be honest. There we go. Oh yeah, this is this next one is gonna be fun, and um, it's being that sarcastic, that's that's not gonna be fun at all. Let's see where did he go. I think he's may not even be be in the right section yet. Yep, there he is. fish to the yeah, uh, you can only flame the yellow fish. Now if you notice at the bottom right of the I guess you can oh the, the, you can't feed him red ones or he'll throw up all of the fish you've given him. Oh crap. You can feed him yellow and blue fish if you notice at the bottom uh, where the map's covering up. Uh, you can see what fish is coming up next. 
kind of. It, it's not a for sure thing, uh, but it does help a little bit. Crap. Sadly, if you, if you throw the, the fish up, you can't put them back in. It doesn't matter what, what kind of redfish it is, the, he cannot eat redfish. And it's just the, the waiting game. Crap, I did it again. It's going to close up th three fish. fish in a row six. Now you can't miss, you have to be pretty fast uh, when you're claiming them. Like I said, you can't miss. And that's what makes it so difficult because you have to be you have to be really fast and you can you know if a red fish does pop up you're thinking, oh I gotta, I gotta do this really fast and you'll end up hitting a red fish. messed up quite a bit, you know, a lot more than than you normally would if you was doing it overall. A lot more than you should. Uh, that was kind of just messing around. If you was really doing it seriously, you know, you wouldn't mess up quite as much as I was doing. So uh, that does kind of factor into the difficulty. But it is kind of difficult, you know, especially because I said, because of what I said, you know, you have to think about, oh, well, I got to do this quickly, and I can't really afford to waste time. You gotta run around the edge of this little rock. Uh, and you, you know, you have to think about, I gotta do this quickly, and if a red fish or a bunch of red fish pop up, you know, you can uh, uh, let it get to you and affect you. So you do have to be careful while doing the that particular challenge, but uh, anyway. So we'll go ahead and go talk to you. If you jump on these stones in the correct order, you will solve the puzzle. I only know what the first one is. It's up to you to figure the rest out. Okay. The star. Now it's the and I can see this is a square with a star in the middle. That's that's what you have to do. Uh, that's the, that's how you figure out the puzzle. Wait. Really? If you jump on these stones in the correct order, you will solve them. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, maybe it's blue, perhaps? Or... Okay. Probably. And then moon. And then tr and then triangle. Okay, so I'm sure there's a pattern there. <laughs> uh, but nice job, Spyro. You're pretty smart for a dragon. All I have to give you is this shiny thing I found in our toolbox. Uh yeah, it's 
So you, you know there is a pattern there. You just have to figure it out. And, but once you figure it out, it's uh, pretty easy. So we got all the orbs now. So all we have to do is just go. How many pieces of treasure do we need? Not that many. So we'll go ahead and uh, get out of here and see if we can find some some of the treasure. Is that? Oh, I was looking at the uh, the lives. I guess I did miss two enemies through here, but it doesn't it doesn't matter. You don't you don't have to get them. The enemies it don't matter as long as you can get enough to unlock the super uh, the the power up gate. That's all you need to worry about. You don't need to worry about any any other type of enemies. While through here, and while you know, while you're running around, having to backtrack through a level, it's actually a pretty good idea to go ahead and st stock up on butterflies because it doesn't matter. Uh, the, the, all the butterflies will carry over to the to the different le uh, levels that you do. And it doesn't matter the type of fodder you hit, as long as you hit fodder, you'll be just fine. Did I get it? Nope. Two more. Oh, that stinks! I gotta get two, uh, the two somewhere around here. Good job finding that. I guess I need to find the upper section, wherever that was. Try to climb up higher. And the thing with uh, with them adding the underwater is that it could be underwater, so you have to look look for that as well, and it won't show up while you're underwater. And now something else that's with underwater, you can you can breathe uh, for as long as you want to, or you, you can stay you can stay underwater as long as you want to. You don't have to worry about uh, Spyro running out of air, so don't you know? Don't worry about that at all. Just uh, especially if you're looking for a gym, just uh, you know, stay under there as long as you need to. I wonder if I got that gym up there. I think I did. Yeah, I did. Well, crap. Is that it over there? No, it's a, one of these weird bugs. I'll try to find that up that upper section. I think I know where uh, where I need to go for for that around here. But just just because the the levels are a lot bigger than they were in Spyro One, so there's a lot more areas to lose gems in. So you do uh, have to be careful and to try to pay attention to every little area that you can find to that treasure could possibly be in. Oh, there you go. And so that will tell you Idle Springs is complete all the way when you, when you have every every item that you can get collect. And then we can get out of here now. And I got all the treasure and everything, so... And because I'm at 48 minutes, uh, I know a lot of that was just wandering around doing nothing. I'm going to go ahead and... Let's see how much treasure I got. Yeah, there's I still got quite a bit to do here. So I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. I'm going to talk about the trivia. For the, for the levels that I've done so far, I'll s I may, s uh, I probably won't talk about the uh, summer forest just yet. I'll, I'll wait till I until after I get through with uh, wait until I beat the level to, to talk about it. And so that's probably what I'll do instead of you know clearing out a level. I will just go ahead and find the closest enemies. Or the, the the closest levels, and then I'll then I'll just do that instead of uh just instead of worrying about uh going through the game or uh, you know instead of doing it like I did with the other thing the other uh the the, the other game. Okay, so we'll go to Glimmer first. Glimmer is a realm that appeared in Ripto's Rage. It is the first realm Sparrow visits in the game. It is all it will as it will serve as the tutorial level. Four hundred pieces of treasure, three orbs, fourteen. Enemies to collect, fodder's ladybugs, the talisman is the uh, magic pick. Let's 
see. Enemies are indigo lizards, brown lizards, and the scarlet lizards. I'm trying to see if I can find any, uh, like a, a lit, a script for what they're talking about, what they said, but I don't think there is, so. I don't, uh, worry about that right now, anyway. So then we'll go to Idle Springs, which is the next, the next level. Idle Springs is a realm in Summer Forest that uh, only appe that appeared in Rip uh, Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. In this level, the idols that the workmen sculpted has suddenly come to life and are causing problems for the locals. In order to make progress, you must defeat the idols that are attacking the sculptors. Fully completing this level hinges on your ability to swim, so pay money back to this ability before hopping into this portal. 400 pieces of treasure, 2 orbs, 11 enemies, uh, blue beetles are the fodder, and then uh, the jade idol is the uh, talisman. Enemies are a marshmallow toasting idol, shield carrying idol, hostage carrying idol, and then the umbrella carrying idol. Trivia Idol Spring shares, shares its theme with Fractured Hills. When the PlayStation Network released Ripto's Rages, Realm and Colossus failed to upload completely, and the game was taken off the market. The glitch has since been fixed, and the game has been re-released re ever since. This realm has the same background as Clifftown. There is a swimming glitch for here. If you know how to double jump, press press. Uh, jump and press square at the same time without using the d-pad or analog stick in the beginning you can jump into the shining wall and double jump again off the shining wall in between to where in between where the first worker rests and the next section of idols if you head bash underneath the water at the right time you'll be swimming in the air okay oh uh, yes yeah, so that's all the uh, trivia trivia for everything so thank you for watching the challenge the video is how many uh how many red gems have I collected so far in the uh, in the game that I've done so far. Thank you for watching. Uh, next time we will continue yeah, uh, with the game. We'll go into some of these other levels. I may even clear, uh, you know, just go into some of these other levels and we'll just keep going until I find a good place to stop. So until then, later everyone.